<laughs> Our next talk is Chris Jester Young, who's going to be presenting uh, making Racket interoperate with an even more hostile environment than Carl had to deal with. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, basically, um, I, um, this is a, oh, this went a little, oh, let me resize this. I'm not trying to waste everyone's time, but um, I would like the window to actually be visible. That's better? Yeah, okay. So, um, one of the things that I um, do a lot in uh, my job is uh, working with Java, although not so much the Java language, but the JVM platform. And uh, I've kind of been working in the J um, JVM system for, you know, the ecosystem for like 10 years now. And um, I sort of um, remember the uh, early days when I was playing with it, when, when I was at the previous job where I was doing a lot of stuff with C++ and, you know, and the, um, and the uh, JVM has a, uh, system called uh, JNI, Java Native Interface, for um, connecting Java, you know, programs with uh, C and C++ code, and and it works. But the the uh, interface it re requires a lot of verbose boilerplate, and unfortunately, um, even in, in the case of C++, a lot of that boilerplate doesn't go away. So your code still looks extremely bad. So. Um, I, of course, uh, recently have been looking at the FFI system that uh, Racket provides, and of course it's all very macro-based, and I thought, hey, this is a way to make much more um, readable, um, much, much, much more readable code for it. Now, I, I don't actually um, have uh, the sort of readable version yet, because this is sort of the low-level version which implements the... Um, it's a low-level thing that I, I, it's probably better if I uh, show you what the the actual no yes no this. <laughs> um, so this is the actual JNI the H file. It's 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 not really important that you see it except that it's actually really long and ugly and has like 300 methods in the um, in the uh, interface and you can see why you know people pull their hair out trying to use it. So. Um, so I wanted to make something that's a little nicer than that. And it, but to, before I can even get started, of course, I have to make something in the um, Racket FFI that can even access the interface so far. So, so I had this file called low level. Uh, the, the, um, the pr I didn't have a chance to uh, make some real uh, slides for this um, because I was, I was just going to sort of demo it, except uh, this didn't go very far. But um, the, the thing I wanted to call this um, uh, I, 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 this project, I, I have a sort of tentative name for it called uh, Rackcona, and the name uh, comes from um, because I was thinking of foreign interfaces and foreign and you know Java coffee, foreign coffee like Kona. <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, the Rackcona um, uh, low level thing. So um, basically, um, I was sort of. Through. I, I wanted to do a demo of it initially, but uh, I couldn't actually quite get it to work. As in, every time I try to do it, um, it's been cracking on me. But you guys are welcome to watch a cracking demo anyway. Um, so, um, so, the, uh, so initially, it just defines the same types that the JNI has, which uh, you know, in the JNI they define all the types named like you know, J, uh, J boolean, J char, J short, J float, J double, J size, all that kind of stuff. So I, I do that same thing but using the um, Racket FFI um, system. And one of the coolest things, um, well, not coolest, but pretty cool in, in the Racket FFI is that um, you you can define sort of like uh, pointer type hierarchies. So you can say, oh, you know, top level is an object and you have class that derives off object, throwable that derives off object. And um, it's, I mean, it kind of doesn't really do very much except that, um, the, sy uh, the system will validate that whatever pointers you put in uh, at least the same. Uh, so in a similar way that here and the JNI the H, they they tried to do the same thing with C++ or those. Yeah. Um, and the um, cool, well, the, the the thing that I tried to do that 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 sort of t took uh, that uh, thing I tried to do to take away a lot of the boilerplate is in this. Um, in this macro called define JNI interface. And I actually took a lot of inspiration from the uh, com um, 
uh, FFI that's in the uh, racket tree because it had a whole concept of define common interface that you know you just um, write out the um, uh, methods in a very compact syntax and it just builds the V table for you and it's really cool. So I tried to do something similar. I mean the implementation is actually quite different, but the idea of um, um, like you know trying to um, you know uh, build a um, V table thing. Um, is right there, and then um, I, I actually um, learned that uh, cool dot 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 thing um, from uh, Matthew this morning. Originally, I only knew how to do uh, dot 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 I, I, obviously, I don't have time to go through all this code, but you know, the idea is that the, the end result is that using the defined JNI interface, you can now write your uh, vtable like this. And so basically, uh, anything like the uh, reserve 0, reserve 1, etc., they're all part of the JNI interface, which basically says they're null and you should never call it. So uh, as you can see, um, in the JNI, the H, you could, you've got your reserve 0, reserve 1, and reserve 2. Reserve 3, don't ask me why the uh, vertical gap is between reserve two and reserve three, but uh, I kind of replicated that in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason. So um, ones that actually have type declarations are actually real uh, things you can call. So like get version in this case uh, takes no arguments and returns a j int. Uh, anything with, without a type thing uh, uh, are not accessible and shouldn't be called. Just some of them like... Um, so most of the ones I, I, I was able to translate, I did. So you know, you have things that like find class that's a string and returns a class, that kind of thing. Um, and so you know, get super class, takes a class and returns a super class. You know, all that sort of obvious stuff. Um, so for the most part, I've got most of the translations in. Some things I had real trouble with, like in uh, the J and I, they have uh, anything that takes multiple um, multiple um, arguments. So like anything like, for example, um, new object there, uh, which calls a constructor or call methods or whatever, any of those can take any number of arguments. Um, they have three ways of doing it. There's the version with no letter after, there's a version with a V, and there's a version with an A. And the difference is that um, in the, um, the, like if you look at a new object there, the one with no letter after it is uh, variadic. It uses the var, uh, var arg stuff. Uh, the one with the V takes a VA list, and the one with A takes an array of J value. And I, I couldn't actually figure out how to work var args or VA list in the um, racket FFI, uh, and so I just decided to go purely with the array stuff, which I haven't tested it yet um, because I, I was too busy trying to fix um, uh, segmentation faults with uh, some of the other methods. So, but it seems in theory to work. Um, so you can see, even here, it's actually re really long and very, uh, there's a lot of repetition there. And eventually, I like to find a way to use a macro to com compact that even further. So like for all the method stuff, you know, it would just, you know, fill up three vtable entries with just one, um, you know, thing that does the no letter, the V and the A. Um, so, uh, and of course, it has to do it for all the primitive types. So in, in the Java, um, in the JVM, so objects are like pointers, and so you know any kind of objects can be represented that way. But the there's eight primitive types: booleans, bytes, char, short, and long, float, double. And in the in the J and I, there are separate methods for each of those. As you can see, it gets really tedious. The set field. Um, so. Uh, there with a get Java VM, I had to comment this out because I could not figure out how to uh, do, um, I couldn't figure out how to do four declarations in the FFI. So like um, the Java VM um, inter um, interface is actually defined below this current one. So obviously in the Java VM interface, it has stuff that refers to this one, and that's easy because it's defined below it. I haven't figured out how to do, you know, refer to things after, so I just commented out for now, punting on it. So, um, yeah, so other than that, so there's some basic stuff there that you know, defines the uh, Java VM there is an invocation interface. Oh, the first interface there, uh, the, there's a main in the first one with the 300 methods that I showed uh, is sort of the uh, main interface you use for accessing all the sort of native stuff from, you know, like accessing, um, accessing Java stuff from native code. 
But this next one, Java VM, is what's called the in invocation interface, and that's what allows you to embed the JVM into a C or C++ program. So I tried to do this as well because my aim was to actually embed the um, uh, embed the JVM into a, a Racket instance so that you can actually invoke Java code from within Racket. Uh, so I've got all that, and I, I actually wrote a little test uh, program to try to demonstrate it, and I will demonstrate it like um, virtually. So I have stuff like th that tries to guess where Java Home is. Um, it, it gets it off your environment variable mm. um, Java Home if, you, if it can, otherwise it looks for Java in your path and uh, resolves a few symlinks and grabs it from there, and then it tries to load the library and stuff like that. So that's all good fun. Um, so the actual um, test code. Uh, let's open it. So, so this is my. Um, t so I just require the low-level thing, as I said, uh, and the um, the in the init args allows you to specify like um, command line arguments to the JVM. Uh, which I don't care about, so all I did is specify the version. The hex 1006 means uh, 1 1.6, which is the latest uh, version. So um, if we run it, uh, it oh, they can only Probably be one. Hash line brackets. Yeah, I, that's right. I, um, I took that out because uh, I was trying to do um, load uh, test.record from within uh, the command line thing, and it, uh, you know, it sort of wanted to do it in the module after that. So, um, so let's save that. Uh, run that. So it, it takes a long time. I have no idea why. Maybe maybe my macro needs a little tuning. But uh, so the next. I've heard the job is slow to start up. Yeah, that <laughs> that could be it too. So um, so obviously you can see this. There, there should be the um, end. Yeah. So you can do things like so with the uh, where is it? Where's the other one? With this interface, I made it so that. Um, with the V table uh, as specified here, like you know, the methods like you know, get version, define class, or whatever, you would call it by uh, calling just get version and then env, and then so the env is always implicit. So I didn't have to specify the env in here because my macro pops it in for you, and so you would do something like um, get version env, and um, it would automatically use env to look up the get version entry in the V table and then call it with that and. So uh, that actually says 65542, which is uh, the same number as that uh, hex 1006. So actually, the version works out correct. So that's my sort of little sanity test that the V table actually works. However, the next thing I tried to do was to do something like uh, define uh, system uh, uh, find class Java lang system. And in the JVM, everything mm -hmm. is in. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, thank you. I always forget that, but um, uh, and, and and the JVM everything is using uh, internally everything uses slashes. It, they don't use dot unlike in the Java language. So uh, unfortunately, once I do that, it actually blows up. So um, <laughs> so that's the next thing I was trying to solve. So um, yeah, um, I I think I've come to the end of my uh, little <laughs> <laughs> demo. <laughs> Thank you. Cool.